You're listening to Your Rivers Are Wrong, the podcast. My name is Merle. I'm here with my good friend Dante, and we're here to build worlds and tell their stories. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Good morning, or evening, or afternoon, wherever you may be. Welcome back to the Your Rivers Are Wrong podcast. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Dante. And I am the other one, and my name is Merle. And we're here as we are every week to talk about the wonderful whimsies of world building, the arts and aesthetics of setting up a setting and telling stories born from it. Now, today... <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good one. Yeah, I've, I'm getting better at it, I gotta say. Almost yeah. slipped up, but I didn't. <laughs> um, today, we'll be totally candid with you. We have a little bit of a time crunch. It is this special time of the year. <laughs> Very specifically two weeks mm-hmm. um, that our calendars or our t- clocks are not like aligned, synced, I yeah. suppose. Yes. So if we haven't made this clear on the podcast before, um, our schedules are like two ships passing in the night. There's a very, <laughs> there's a very slim moment where uh-huh. both of us are available to record. And thanks to Daylight Savings, that moment is just a little bit smaller than usual. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. by the end of the month, I think we'll be okay. Uh, any life updates? Anything going on with you? Hmm. Busy, ups and downs. So far, still That's good. Fair. We'll have a lovely weekend in which I will do nothing but go to a musical with my dad, and I'm looking forward to it. That sounds fantastic. Sounds awesome. How about you? You have some g- good things in advance? Yeah. Um. You know what? This week, I have a bit of spare time. I gotta say, I'm looking forward to... Whoa. <laughs> I have a couple days off next week. I have two days off next week. Oh, it's a nice. time I scheduled for myself. That's Not planning to go That's anywhere. Good. Yeah. Um, but this past weekend, I actually got like three full nights of sleep. Like hey. straight up. <laughs> it's like Congrats. I had things I could do, but I think I'm going to shelve it for my own personal health and just take care of myself. You, know? you should definitely <laughs> you know? do that. Yeah. Were you still so, able to sleep or did you like unlearn it? Um, <laughs> I was able to sleep more. I wouldn't say like full, full nights of sleep. I still woke up like early ish. Okay. You know. Okay. Fair enough. Better than it's been. I thought you woke up like super early today, but then it was daylight no, savings. No, I, I, woke, it's I like woke up. Normal time for you. <laughs> yeah, the or, or, I, mean, I woke up the time. ordinary yeah. time. I I think mm-hmm. it clicked <laughs> when I messaged you, and I'm like, wait a second, something's weird about this. I already week. saw you in voice channels <laughs> because we uh we like record via Discord as well, and then I was like, yeah. oh wow, you're like excited, and like I still need an hour. <laughs> but no, <laughs> I'm in chat one hour early. I don't know. So maybe I don't know. <laughs> I I mean, I am pumped for this podcast. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um. So uh, I have a topic today that is a little bit lighthearted. I don't know if it's gonna match the theme of yours. It's a little bit specific. <laughs> okay, we'll make it work. Sure. Sure. Bring it on. Today, I want to kind of tackle quite literally like a world, a world crafted by a specific form of media Hmm. that many people are familiar with. And we can kind of break down like, what are its key concepts? Okay, yeah, I like this. Yeah. And maybe even the failings of it and or what you would change if you could. Um, So today's topic is Pokemon. It's the amazing Japanese franchise that has uh, launched millions of plushies and games and (laughs) other memorabilia. But I kind of want to talk about why it's so popular. What led to its incredible uh, virality and popularity? And in the context of world building, what makes it so special? I do have a couple of things I want to highlight, but is there anything that sticks out to you right away when you think about Pokemon and the world that it encompasses? Mm, First things first, like my brother is a way bigger fan than I am. I mean, I like (laughs) it, but I, I wasn't like religiously watching it. I think when we were younger, he was always sort of annoyed because my mom didn't let him watch Pokemon. I still don't really know why. <laughs> Maybe it was like too much going on. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but um, so he would like religiously play the Nintendo DS games and would force me to also play them <laughs> and would <laughs> nice. like have the team song in his head the entire holiday. <laughs> Amazing. You know, you, you know, you see the picture here. But I think what I like most of it is there sort of companionship thing going on and the idea that it's a sort of skilled training. It's kind of like adventuring in a way of like, oh, you're getting out into the world and you're becoming a trainer. And then all mm-hmm. of them have like special abilities and that feels really cool, sort of like superhero magical sidekick, but like cooler than you actually. Like you can only fight because <laughs> of your, because you have a cool animal with you. Yeah, I think that's the main gist of it. Yeah, the sort of exploring and the fact that you can collect them. There's a lot of sort of addictive 
elements to this, I feel. Yeah, that's fair. There are, I, I grew up with Pokemon and all my friends loved it and I played as much as I could. Nice. I, my family wasn't too big on video games when I was younger. So mm-hmm. it took a while till they would like let me play <laughs> one of these games, but I was still surrounded by it because all my friends played it. Sure. What's interesting about Pokemon is that the main character or the protagonist is not really the focus of the story. It's about the uh, the Pokemon that he collects, the creatures that follow him, like the unique varieties of mm-hmm exotic creatures that kind of are trained in tandem to create a very special team uh, you're yeah. more like a like a manager or a coordinator for all these like superstars <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i like uh, that but yeah. <laughs> but when you know when you get older right i've lost track of how many pokemon there are i bet there's some people who still know how many there are off the top of the, my head but isn't I there lost... that one like song from brian david gilbert that did like a pokemon song where he named all of them yes yeah <laughs> and it's like the only so strong i have <laughs> shout outs to bdg if you ever watches this Mm -hmm. um yeah there's a clean like 600 700 plus by now there's got to be more and they're coming out with a new a new region new game probably 100 more pokemon a bit too much for me to wrap my head around now but wait they're coming um, out with a new thing like an entire new thing yeah there's a new one it's uh, like a game or a tv series or what a full game game. Ooh, that's cool it's based in like didn't know that so what's interesting about the regions and as we kind of transition into the world building concept um is that each of them is loosely based on like a location or era or time period like that exists mm. in the real world um this one in particular most people believe is based around spain and the aesthetics of their architecture oh and, that's cool um landmarks there's been france there's been japan obviously there's been um like new york like there's a lot of influences from real life hmm. but you know as you grow up and kind of look back on the whole system the whole era um you kind of realize there's some kind of strange things about it most primarily the major concept that you are a 10 year old uh, wandering out on your own into the great world, uh, which is, of course, deemed safe for 10 year olds to travel freely to capture wild and dangerous creatures and then <laughs> yeah. put them against each other in, in combat. Let them you know? <laughs> fight until, the, yeah. until they're unconscious. <laughs> yeah, just, a, just uh-huh. a little bit. Str- the premise is a bit strange. And when you kind of break it down like that, it doesn't. <laughs> there's a there's certainly a lot of suspension of disbelief to make it <laughs> kind of work out for sure for sure i feel like it feels a lot like a sort of sports anime in the way that mm-hmm. they sort of use their the sort of championships and stuff they have right and the training centers yes. and the fact that they're all sort of part of this community of of pokemon trainers and when you find like when you meet someone you don't know before you you're gonna have a fight and then you see who's better and stuff it's a sort of competitive thing i feel yeah. Which I guess allows for a lot of the <laughs> like not terribly dangerous things to not feel so terribly dangerous because it's feels like a sport in a way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's almost like a cultural greeting to just kind of see somebody out in the streets and be like, hey, want to have our animals fight? Yeah. Sure, sort you know? of. <laughs> and whoever <laughs> I mean, wins of, yeah. gets money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but something very important about this, of course, is why this has been so popular what makes it so incredibly enticing and exciting for um the people who play it Mm -hmm. and it truly is just an adventure it really you kind of build your own party usually this is comprised of like you know people with special talents but here instead you're appealing to the the charm of pets and the companionship as you said yeah and every game kind of follows the same trend of capture pokemon train them up defeat an, Mm -hmm. uh, an evil criminal syndicate and then become the greatest trainer in the world, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And that's a hero story in itself, just to watch yourself. Refresh my memory, though. Like, do you ever become the greatest hero in the world? Isn't this a thing where you, like, never reach the end because then they can keep making new franchises? Because this is what so I remember an... from Pokemon, like, from the TV series, that it just kept going yes. and going, and it was, like, 10 years long, and they never reached the final training center or whatever it was that, that they had to go. <laughs> yeah, so it's a long recurring joke that Ash Ketchum never ages. Um, oh, he's right, been... yeah, yeah. He's That's been 10 thing, years yeah. old for 20 years. <laughs> oh, but um, yes, he's reached the... So this is specific to the anime. He's reached the grand tournament in every region, at least like every time. Every time he goes to a new region, and there's been okay. seven or eight yeah. by this point, he always reaches those t- that top eight. How uh-huh. he places is um, variable. You know, if he doesn't win at all, then they can continue the series, right? It's yeah, kind of like more, a, a, more growth another mountain possible. to climb. Yeah, yeah. For exactly. Sure. So he has won once, I think. I'm pretty sure he's won once. Like the whole thing truly really? crowned the okay. greatest of the region. 
Um, but yeah. most of the time he places like second or fourth or eighth. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Then he just gets knocked out by like somebody very, very, very good. Sure. Yeah. And then he takes it upon himself to leave all of his Pokemon uh, with Professor Oak, start over with Pikachu and go to another region. And he just does it all over again. I mean, more power to him. He's just... Fair really enough. Good. Yeah. I mean, he's living his best life. Not gonna lie. Exactly. I think it's also mainly... Like, the fact that it's about animals. Like, you can have eternal pets that are super powerful and everyone will love them instantly because you because it's Pokemon. <laughs> Which mm -hmm. is one big appeal to literally any child of, like, eight years old. <laughs> and exactly. adult, like, probably. Same, you know? Not, <laughs> I'm not sure they're still adults. Shielding yeah. others from this, from, this, from this excitement of pets. We're not gatekeeping Pokemon, yeah. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> Everybody should love Pokemon. Yeah, so I feel like it's a sort of the pet companion thing that attracts a lot of people. And then it's the fact that you can train them, which is like a management thing, what you were saying. Like, it's a sort of superhero thing, but then you can facilitate all the superheroes, which is very satisfying. Yes. And I mean, this is also, I think, why like management games in general do so well. Like, this is the Planet Zoo or what's it called? Like, Zoo Tycoon and stuff, you know, where you can just sort of upgrade and you can sort of make it work for yourself and be like efficient in like which animal you upgrade first or what you, you know, spend your time on first and stuff like that, which has a lot of appeal. And then I guess it's the sort of friendshipness and the importance of sort of everything around this sport of collecting and training Pokemon, right? Yeah. Like he meets friends and he meets rivals and he meets that he keeps defeating every time and then they fly in the air and disappear. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And it truly is like a unique story every time because, you know, the game, millions and millions yeah. of these games have been pumped out and nobody ever has the same team by the end of it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. It truly is like pick your own party pick the things pick, pick the pokemon that you want to travel with that you feel personally connected to yeah i guess so and yeah. travel the world like I there's think a that's lot of a customization fantasy. there yeah i didn't realize that did you have a favorite part of the game or um, a thing that you like most about it so there is something called which i did with the most recent game there is something called a nuzlocke which is uh special restrictions you put on yourself when you oh, play the game okay where you can only catch one pokemon per region you travel to and it has to be the first one you encounter. Oh. So you don't really get to choose your party as much as you get to ex you get to meet who's going to be on your team. Hmm. And then if that Pokemon ever faints in the entirety of the game, you have to put them in the box and never use them again. Oh. You treat them as if they've like simply passed away. Oh, that's And it adds rough. a yeah, it adds a little bit of a gravitas to your the progression of your game and you learn to really value the ones that you have. Hmm. Uh, more than you would be like, oh, I could just catch another one. Well, you yeah, can't yeah, yeah. really. So. And also death is a real thing then. Like you can lose your buddies. Yeah, you can you can totally like in your mind's eye, like lose that Pokemon. Yeah, that's like stakes. Yeah. And you put that if it was the cornerstone of your team or kind of the rock that everything stood behind, when that drops, you got to rebuild. You got to think mm -hmm. about what you're going to do next. Yeah, fair. Um, I like that. Oh, I interesting. Enjoy that part. Okay. That makes sense, though, because there's so many options. Like, I guess it's also easy to get overwhelmed if you have literally the entire world of Pokemon that you could train. Yeah. Um, and it's and the way it's constructed appeals to kids. You know, it's um, more oh, yeah. or less a linear path. There's gym. There's badges you got to collect and you got to be this strong to beat them. So, you know, no matter how young you are, you should be able to make your way through Pokemon with no hmm. problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is very accommodating, you know, like how. How worlds are simplified for the audience. Like, you know how like uh -huh. Dora the Explorer always has a straight line between <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> where, yeah, yeah. Where uh -huh. she needs to go and where exactly. she wants to be. Yeah. With like one, two obstacles in the way. Like that. You know, that's all you need for, for the audience you're reaching for. Mm -hmm. Um Pokemon obviously reaches a more wide range of people, but it's still like visually appealing and satisfying to see and watch and experience. Yeah, for sure. And it has a lot of that sort of exploring quality and you can make it as easy and as complicated as you want. Like you can just fight until they're dead and you can just start over or, or I mean, not dead. How do you say that? Like unconscious. <laughs> um, they but think, uh, they yeah, until they have Pokemon like, don't die. <laughs> like, like crosses for eyes. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> so you can play this if you're like eight and you don't know how the game works, you can play it and you can just collect cute animals and like fight other cute animals. And that's the, that's the and deal. That's fun. And you could play it if you're like 20 or 30 or 40 and you can like, completely manage the shit out of this game and it's great <laughs> yeah um i think it's just a with, with all the flaws of its premise and the suspension of disbelief it's good enough right to <laughs> for to send people on the journey that they yeah that they could you know that people dream of it's a fantastic sometimes series that's all reason. you need yeah yeah and it's honestly it's a great you know 
it shows that sometimes you just need like one concept and you can stick to it and you know 20 years later you have a franchise <laughs> and that's great apparently people love it and that's perfect yeah i think it's lasted the test of time certainly mm -hmm. um, yeah for sure but yeah i think I think this is a kind of a fun exercise. If there's like a, a world uh, or a setting that both of us are pretty familiar with, then we could just kind of talk about, break down and see. Yeah, that's kind of nice too. Yeah, it's a sort of like spotlight, spotlight feel. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you'd change about Pokemon before we bounce to another topic? Ooh, that's hard. Well, I feel for me, the stakes are like stupid when he keeps, how do you say that? Like refreshing his training <laughs> like what's this word again like i think i saw a video Restarting. essay on this in relationship to cora and um, avatar and stuff where they talked about power crawl i think is the word where you have like you know where you have a build-up of like skills and powers and levels and then if it's done right then you have a nice arc and then he's powerful and has the final nice battle and then with pokemon i never it feels like an eternal slope, you know, that you're on. <laughs> and then at some point he skips down a little bit and then you're like, hmm, is he still rising? I'm not sure. Was he? Wasn't he here before? That was kind of what I had at some point. So I would love like a good, solid, super emotional ending to it. But I mean, I also get it. So it's also kind of part of it at this point. <laughs> Could you imagine if Ash just went to the next region with all of his strongest Pokemon and just bulldozed his way through this like <laughs> would the first be like couple no trims. Story. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm the best one. Can I can I go now? Uh, all right, we got to go through this whole region in uh what is it? 13 episodes. All right, Ash. Speed run. Let's go. You're bringing go. Charizard, yes. you're bringing Snorlax. Let's go, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. <sighs> yep. Would you change anything? Um personally, I would be down with like slightly older characters. Um because you're always hmm. playing a 10-year-old and I feel like That's if there fair. was a Pokemon yeah. targeted towards like a more mature audience that could kind of see, you know, try to, they, they would never do this mm -hmm. to that dilute the brand, so to speak. But like, yeah. if there was like a darker tone to like a Pokemon game where they could kind of That's go kind a little, of nice. yeah. like, you know, test the boundaries of like what Pokemon get involved in and stuff like that. Yeah, you I know? like that. Specifically because the audience is also now like older, 30 yeah. year olds and 20 year olds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. which is great. Love that. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good segue because I literally talked about endings just now and I was planning on talking about endings <laughs> right now. <laughs> Building today, on last week. Let's go. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I thought last week we had a beginning, so I feel like I kind of should tie it off nicely. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think it started because I watched Dale Kingsmill's YouTube video about making dragons deadly, mm. and uh, which is really good, by the way. And uh, it's, it started to make me think about what it means to have a boss battle. And why that's a thing versus normal battles, if you know what I mean. Like, why is there a sort of big, heavy end, like, all stakes are combined battle? Why is that right. a thing? And it sort of leans into how you should properly end an arc or properly end a story, but also how combat and sort of player agency is involved in that. Because it's quite, you know, the final showdown of something. It really depends on the medium, but also on the stakes that you've built beforehand, right? The right. ending is only as good as sort of the entire buildup of your story. Like if you have no buildup, then there's no ending because there's nothing to like <laughs> build away from, I guess, if that's, that's how you say it. Did you ever end a campaign? No. Did you but tie something off ever consciously? I'm, I'm getting... Or perhaps in a story. I'm getting really close to ending my two home campaigns. Oh, really? If, if, we were, if we're able to meet up regularly this year... One of my campaigns will end in June and one by like the fall, which is oh, crazy whoa. because like one of the one of the first ones been two years running and the second one's been like five years running. And I think I'm finally <gasps> reaching the point where I'm like five years. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's crazy. So it's like we're finally reaching the point where it's like these are the bad guys. You're the good guys. Here's right. everyone you've met. <laughs> Here are all your resources. How are you going Fight. to how you yeah, how are you gonna wrap this up? It's the mm -hmm. time is running out. Oh, okay. On so you, so they're like they're at the point of choice or sort of final decisions now. Is that what's yeah. going on? It's mm, um, interesting. I feel like one of the keys to a a good ending is a time crunch in that the oh, okay. situation has to be resolved. Like it it's kind of mandatory that it's done in a certain amount of time or within a certain frame. And if you miss this chance, then things get really bad. And yeah, I think that's really important to do because otherwise they could just leisurely take their time, build up resources forever and, you know, yeah, watch, watch the pressure. Yeah. And you can still do that, but it has to be more in the beginning when they're figuring other stuff out in general. Of course. Like, of course. That was the thing that you were saying, like, these are the bad guys, you're the good guys. Now we know what's up and now you can plan for it, basically. Yeah, I like that. 
I also read, because I did a little bit of research just to see what other people had to say about this. Mm -hmm. And one person, I forgot who it was. It was in a forum somewhere or on a, I don't know, blog post. I don't know. (laughs) Um, But someone talked about leaving a story or leaving an arc on a metaphorical island. Like you don't have to necessarily, if your entire story takes place in this world, then it's nice to leave your story on a quote unquote island, so to say, by which Mm. they meant you can, you don't have to resolve everything. Like there's still places to go. We can still see along the horizon, but we need a place to rest to sort of take a breath from whatever happened in all the previous chapters or, you know, sessions, I guess. And I thought that was quite nice because... There's a difference between like completely tying off a story and there's nothing left unresolved Mm -hmm. versus a good ending. Like those are not necessarily synonymous. Synonymous. (laughs) Synonymous. That's the word. (laughs) I hate English. (laughs) Yeah, but exactly. So I thought that was pretty nice because then you can see it as a sort of like down... Don't laugh at me. Don't laugh at me, Dante. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm, la- I'm laughing at English. I'm laughing at English. It's, it's, it's <laughs> That's very what, nice what a, of you. What, mm-hmm. I think the world will agree English is a dumb language, but that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> what if we do like a, a podcast episode in Dutch and then I can I'm telling laugh you, at you entirely? I'm telling you, you can do <laughs> that. For I'll it? learn just a little bit at a time and we'll have Amazing. like a little segment there. Amazing. I do my best and I'll be like a three-year-old, <laughs> but... I'm oh, sure. by the way, we forgot to mention that we now know Europe and, and the US. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. We've done it. We finished it. Uh, okay, side note. Yeah, uh, you memorize the states, I memorize Europe, and obviously we know the inverse. So, yes. So oh, cool. yes. Yeah. Talking about, like, power power crawl, we should, like, up our game now. <laughs> oh, what do you think? I feel like I want to know, like, capitals and stuff now. Like, capitals. I'm not done with all the stupid quizzes. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to learn the Caribbean islands, and it's difficult. <laughs> oh, Just... they're the worst. So once I get that done, we could we could try. What do you want? Uh, European country, European capitals, or I started American with capitals? European capitals. Yeah. Okay, that's the next thing. Nice, love Gosh, it. Gosh, I'm Honor. gonna know more European After capitals than United States capitals. But <laughs> love that's it. Just how Perfect. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So so we got <laughs> European capitals. We got Dutch. We got okay, okay. We'll just put those over here uh-huh. on the shelf. Put it on um, the list. Okay. Yep. <laughs> anyway, Amazing. endings. Where were um, we? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, endings. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> uh, yeah. I totally agree. I think there is a charm to a world still having loose ends. Not on the point that they're unsatisfying, but the fact that a tied up and completed successful ending still leaves the reader or watcher wondering what happens next, right? Um, yeah. Say you save all of outer space. Now the, now the galaxy is safe. Now what? So yeah. <laughs> where, where, what doors open up? Like, where can you go? What can you do? Things like that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That made me, made me remember like how they talk about fade outs sometimes in music. Like mm-hmm. if you have a fade out, then the music keeps lingering longer in your brain because that's just how like the science of it works. And oh, then you cool. just keep remembering it longer if you have a longer fade out. Yeah, I don't know. It feels like your story should fade out and not like completely be done. And also it reminded me of a children's book. Maybe I've already talked about this before, Um, but it's a Dutch children's book that I absolutely love. And I found out accidentally how great it is and nobody knows about it. (laughs) But it's called Exodus by Julie, Julie Bertania, I think. Um, And the whole story is about a girl that lives on like one of the last remaining islands that are still like not flooded in the world. It's a bit like a future sci-fi thing. And the whole story is about sort of convincing um, her. I guess, island fellow islanders that they should actually leave. And that they're talking about a time crunch, by the way, like they're not going to be able to live there forever because they see the water rising every day, you know, and there's talk of like other societies or people that have, you know, found other ways or other islands to live on or, or other places or they've made like a city themselves, blah, blah, blah. And the story is about sort of taking the risk of leaving. Mm. And the last chapter, I hated this when I was young, but I love it now is literally them stepping on boats and sailing away. Right. And that's it. And you literally don't know anything about the rest. And I was so annoyed by it in the past, but <laughs> I love it now because it's a per- it's not it is a resolve of the story. Like of course we don't know where they'll end up, but the fact of like leaving, they completed it. They found a way to do it or they I guess got over the idea of leaving everything behind and not being able to do it emotionally blah blah blah, right? Yeah. So sometimes you literally don't need anything but to resolve the thing that you're your story is about and then it can be as open-ended as you want right 
Exactly. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's a book called The Giver, if if you've read it, um, where... Oh, I think yeah. I've saw the... Is the isn't there a movie from that as well? There is, I yeah. I think I saw the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's like a mandatory reading for uh, kids in middle school, high school it, over here oh, in the really? States. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was like a young adult novel thing. Yeah, it, it also is or, that. Yeah. Oh, but it's like a classic one? Oh, I didn't yeah, realize that. Yeah, it's, it's super popular Fancy. here in the States. Oh, okay. So The Giver basically takes place in the utopian society where everything is very heavily regulated and people don't know about the outside world because they don't know ex- it exists. But um, it, uh-huh. it is a slow realization to the main character who is gifted all these memories, like he's given all these memories by The Giver of an outside world. And his job is to oh, keep them safe, yeah. like right. kind of as a living archive. Right. And the story mm-hmm. ends, spoiler if you haven't read The Giver, it's a fantastic book. Um, he leaves. And the last two pages are him witnessing the first thing, uh, the first things of the outside world that he comes across. And it, oh. the book ends with him heading towards it. Right. And that's they, very cool. Wow. And barring his appearance in like another book by the author, like he, I think he appears um, in passing or, or of some relevant importance in a future book loosely tied to it. That's oh, a, nice. that's a very open ended story where you don't know where yeah. he's gonna, what he's going to do, where he's going to go. But, you know, he has he carries the memories of this vast world he's never experienced and he now gets to experience it. Right. So, yeah, that's so satisfying, yeah. even though it's an open end. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I don't need to know if he gets married, has kids, buys a house, like, you know, finds a job. No, I, I guess not. I, I don't need to. Yeah. I can live blissfully with the fact that he finds what he was looking for, you know. There is a there is a, compl- <laughs> yeah. a satisfaction in his journey and his conclusion that I don't really need closure on where he goes. It's just that he goes, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's a lot of skill involved in terms of like writing or running a game or, you know, in any storytelling mm-hmm. where you sort of have to know where you want to end it. Because sometimes it also is interesting to keep going. I think we talked about this in a previous episode where you mentioned like an anime that just kept dragging on because they never sort of fell in love. Oh, I think we talked about romance and stuff. Yes, yes. There, it's quite interesting that you can see the push and pull, even though eventually it took too long. But, you know, that's also, you could have stopped before that. And that would also be a story, but it would be a different story. And it depends on what you want to tell. And, of course, if you do it well, um, but where to end it. And both stories are relevant. But, it, yeah, it's a different, different vibe. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's an art form like ending a story because you have to prove mm-hmm. that all of the trials and tribulations that the character w- experienced and the things that your reader has read through and like gone like they've read hund- hundreds of pages of your story they're invested they've dedicated time and energy and emotion into the development of these characters you want to have a satisfying ending that you know validates that effort you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah exactly yeah and it depends what that arc is or what that focus is, what you have to actually resolve or finalize in the ending. And if that means someone leaving and literally starting an entire new chapter of their life, but us finally, like in terms of The Giver or of Exodus, the other book, mm-hmm. that is still a resolve. And I think that's that's important to realize, I guess. And also a very good one, because not a lot of people do it that way, because it's scary to write an open ending. But it's great. <laughs> people should write <laughs> open endings. Yeah, I mean, what what was a relatively closed ending? Uh, Harry Potter, I think, when they like listed off the names of their kids. Yeah, uh, they literally had an epilogue. Yeah, I really hated that. Tr- by the way, it, it I mean, felt like a fan. Harry Potter's great, but it's yeah, it didn't work for me. It felt like it was I did, written I, by I, a fan, I didn't need to know. and that's kind of my my yeah. two cents on that's it. That's kind of lame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I but I also think that I needed that closure just a little bit because if they just left it off as Harry wins, you know. And then the book ended there. I'd also be unsatisfied with that. So <laughs> mm, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Specifically because it's a long series. Like you've been living and growing up with these people. <laughs> yeah, that's perhaps a difference than just one book or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, I you know what I do. I do like how Rowling ended that. I do. I do like that we got to see like who got married <laughs> you to your mind, like the in kids. the middle of the. Okay. I just think okay. it was okay. cheesy. You know, I just like the name. I thought the names were kind of tacky, but you know, like Hugo <laughs> I don't need to and know Rose the names of the kids. And yeah, oh gosh. Um, <laughs> you know, okay. Here's here's my opinion. I'll I'll like yeah. sh- finalize this more. It's okay. Yeah, I didn't mind that they tied it off in like, oh, you know, they're living this family life now, and oh, they're passing it on to the next generation. Blah blah blah. Right. Mm-hmm. But I would love it to be more like silhouetted in the distance. Like I wouldn't 
need sure. to see Harry face to face in like right in front of me. Like thinking of the the Keyleth moment from Critical Role. Right. Spoilers. That's exactly it. In campaign two, they sort of tied off her story a little bit. And that felt so perfect because I didn't need to know anything else except for that she was there and atmosphere. And that was sort of the whole moment. There wasn't yeah. a lot of additional things. There wasn't dialogue. It was just mm. like one snippet of it. And then that satisfied my craving for her being being happy in the future, you know? And that was and maybe the fact that I didn't know anything else also strengthened that idea. I guess that's what I missed a little bit in the other one, because this was like, oh, and he works here and then his kids are this and, then, and you know, these are related <laughs> now and they have a family now and, you know, the train is still the same, by the way, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. It's a bit fair. too practical. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. For, for context, of course, uh, Keyleth is a character from the Critical Role uh, mm. show uh, of a D&D campaign. She's a character from campaign one, and we kind of get to see the resolution of her story vaguely. Years later. Yeah. yeah. In, in campaign two. Which is, mm-hmm. which is a nice kind of tie back and satisfying conclusion. Yeah, well, that's a good moment. Uh, do you have a favorite ending? Do you have like... In general? Just something that like wrapped itself perfectly, in your opinion. If you don't have one like off the top of your head, but if you Like do, an example, you mean? Yeah, like an example. Ooh, um, hmm, interesting. I have to say I do like an epilogue, but then it would have to be a more... I also like when things are a bit sad in the end. Which is, I mean, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like fair. not in general, I don't wish for the characters that I care about to be sad, but it's nice if there's a little bit of a like bittersweet. Mm-hmm. I'm a real sucker for bittersweet endings. Yeah. Where you're kind <laughs> of like, okay, they're scarred, but they're moving on. You know, I really, really love that so much. Very, that's very really Hunger good. Games of you, I gotta say. <laughs> kind of Hunger Games. Yeah. I was, I didn't want to say it because I was like, is this the only thing that I'm going to refer to forever in this podcast? <laughs> I, I like, do my didn't best. I r- find I, other stories as well that are great, but nope, keep returning to it. <laughs> I do my best not bringing up Avatar. I feel you. As, mo- yeah. as often as I can. <laughs> and D and D. I, I, those are like my pocket uh, things that I could talk about forever. <laughs> but there's other media out there, and I'm doing my best. So, uh huh. Yeah. I mean, it's just good, you know. When when it's good, it's good. But yeah, that's when I really love bittersweet endings. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, it's kind of tied to genre, but I really like the endings of psychological thrillers when you don't know for mm. sure if everything's happy and happy and resolved. At the oh, end, okay. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. D- are they really, have they really escaped? Is the monster still alive? Um, oh, like, yeah, yeah, are yeah. Are they real? Are they still dreaming? You know, stuff like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this, I think, um, oh, what's this show called? My, my... My Life as a Teenage Robot. Have you ever seen it? It was a Nick show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With XJ9. They were so good at it. Jesus. Only recently I found out how great that show actually is. Um, I never consciously watched it, I guess. <laughs> but there's one episode where they have, I mean, it's about a teenage robot. Someone like invents a robot and she's a teen and she has teen yes. problems, but she's also a robot. That's the premise of the show. And it's yes. great. <laughs> <laughs> and in the one episode, I think people get like super enamored by her and she gets like merch and stuff and there's like tiny dolls <laughs> that can like talk and they look like her it's a, <laughs> this is a weird mm-hmm, premise mm-hmm. this is the only thing that i remember from this but then at some point the dolls sort of were corrupted and they became like weird and then he had to fight it and then the threat sure. was over that was kind of the super dry um <laughs> idea of this episode <laughs> and then the last shot after they were done you could see like under a like a draw how do you say that like a cabinet of sorts on the floor, you could see like the eyes or something lit up of like one of the last dolls that were mm-hmm. still in like the aftermath of the fight that was still like alive. And then it ended with that shot. And I was like, wait, wait, <laughs> that's not an ending. Now it's this is the problem repeats itself. And that's also very satisfying because then you have like the final twist where you know it doesn't really matter how it ends up, but it's really nice that you're like, haha, kind of like that. Kind of like leaving know. that door open if they ever want to re- revisit it. I guess it. so. Yeah. And it's also a sort of nice, like, this isn't over yet moment, I guess. Mm -hmm. Even though if they don't resolve it, like, I feel like it's a more tricky one because it can be like really stupid and sort of defeat the whole point (laughs) of your entire episode, right? Like, if you do it in a stupid way, then it's like, well, why did I watch this 20 minutes if the problem is not solved at all anyway, you know? (laughs) But that one was a really nice one. Pretty good. Pretty good. I think in general, right? The the goal of endings is to leave the viewer or the reader satisfied mm-hmm. and validated with watching it or or, or consuming yeah. it. Yeah. You know? Um and it in thrillers it's like, oh, do you keep that mystery going? Obviously in mm-hmm. action movies, does everybody get a happily ever after? 
there's different endings uh, specific to genre, but overall, it's just what do you want to leave the watcher with, right? What do you want yeah. them to take away from? That's a good question. From the yeah. experience. Cool. I mean, that's it. <laughs> I feel like, ironically, like the fact that we don't know how to end this is very <laughs> funny to me. <laughs> but I mean, we still have a prompt, so we're we have we have some margin there. But <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay, okay. We're not writing a story; we're just making a podcast. Okay, so so hear me out. Hear me out. I do have a a, a bit of an interesting prompt today. Um, oh, okay. I don't know how it's gonna play out, but this is how it's gonna go. Mm-hmm. You so I you've done for people who don't know you, you've done a lot of theater, right? Just in general. Yeah. Right. Have you ever done like any improv? Have you ever had to just make up a scene as you go? Um, a little bit. Yeah, we did more like script based stuff. It mm-hmm. was a lot of um, like more production. So we would work for a year on one extensive, you know, piece and then perform it. Um, but I did some improv. Yeah, th- those were kind of the in between in between classes. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Do you mind if I pull on your acting chops just a little bit? Um, I'll be helping Ooh-hoo. out with this scene. And we're going to, sure. we're going to, speaking of uh, beginnings and endings, we're actually going to continue where we left off. Last week, we animated or narrated a chase scene. Uh, we had uh, a oh. pair of shapeshifters, I believe it was, one running away from the law, one who was part of the law, previously partners, uh, partners in crime, um, siblings, so to speak, and one kind of turned over a new leaf while the other one didn't. Now, the way that story mm-hmm. concluded anybody recalls is that both shapeshifters took on the appearance of the good cop basically the good brother Mm -hmm. and they were promptly discovered by you know the police that that the good brother was working with Uh uh-huh so the scene that we're going to do today is going to be an interrogation now hear me out i'm going to link you some music this is royalty free music and this will help you like Get the scene. We're doing music? Get the scene We're down. We're up in the game here. Okay. So I don't know if your mic will pick up on it. If there's any way it won't, you're free to figure it out. I don't think so. If out. I play it, hold on. I, what I'm going to do is I'm going <laughs> to just put it on my... you that great. I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah, because I've never done it before. This is new. This is new Fair Uncharted enough, territory. Yeah, sure. This is kind of just to set the Oh, mood. I think I'm hearing it now uh, just through my headphones, so I think I'm good. Awesome. Like, we can add it later, right? Yeah. Or I'm going to uh, add it in post. I'm going to add it in post. Okay, you getting the sound of this? This is a vibe. Not going to lie. Okay. So this is the theme. We're in the interrogation room. The good brother, the good shapeshifter, is trying to prove to their new partner in crime, the new proper cop, that he is, in fact, the partner that they've been working with the whole time. Remember, the police department doesn't know that he was a shapeshifter. So he's been deceiving them this entire time. And his goal right now is to prove that he's the person that they've been working with the whole way through. Interesting. Okay. So... So where's the other brother? The other brother just fled, like, out of the picture? No, the other brother is locked away somewhere else. They're trying to figure out who's who right now. Okay, gotcha. So I'm going to give you the choice. Would you rather be the interrogator or the brother? Ooh. Assume that these two people have worked in tandem for a bit of time now, so there's a, a good amount of trust yeah. that's been built up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be the interrogator. Sure. You got it. Um, and feel free to ad lib anything. We haven't decided on names here. Uh, you come up with a name. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're running Should with we it. decide on names? Because okay, I feel okay, like okay. we missed out on that one last time because we kept saying like the other brother and the other shapeshifter. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um, the shapeshifter's name. I'm just going to his name's going to be Billy. We'll just do we'll just do Billy. I feel like that's just a Billy. OK. Yeah. And your character's name is whatever you want it to be. I will be uh, I will be uh, Joanne. Joanne. Sure. Oof. OK, OK. I was going to go with Joel, but it felt like too much of a <laughs> stretch. <laughs> Billy and Joel. Okay, Joanne. Perfect. So let's set the scene again. The music is playing. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Dim the lights. Room is dark. One chair, one table, one light. Up. You walk into the room. You see the face of someone you've been working with for years at this point. Uh-huh. But is it really them? The news have gone out that there's two people with this face. And you got to figure out if this is your partner or if this is somebody entirely different. One man goes free, one man doesn't. It's up to you. The ultimate prisoner's dilemma, huh? All right. Okay. Billy's there. He's got his he's got his hands uh, manacled, uh, and he's got kind of holding his hand, his head in his hands. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll step in. You'll hear like the clicking of boots on the on the sort of cold linoleum floor, I guess. Take a chair, sit in front of you, in front of Billy. Take a moment, you know 
Because this is confusing, right? I guess the world knows about shapeshifters. Sure. But this specific situation is, well, as I'm saying, like a specific one. So Joanne will try to compose herself. Um, not entirely sure how to even begin this, I guess. And she'll say, um, leaning over the table a little bit. Billy. Joe. We're at it again. <laughs> yeah, usually I'm on that side of the table, though. Well, I guess so, if that's, um, if that's who you say you are. You're making this very hard for us. You know that was not my intention, right? I'm just trying to... You know I had to keep this a secret, right? I, I, there's just so much that would have happened that's happening now, and I just... I mean, you're not giving us a lot to go on here, you know what I mean. Things like this are usually supposed to be discussed, because if the sh- situations like this arise, how are we going to be able to help you? If you're not telling us what you're supposed to be telling us, how can we even work this out? Like, I don't even know if I'm talking to the right, if I'm talking to Billy right now. Do you understand what position that puts me in? Yeah, but you you got to consider, like, if I told you all that I was a shapeshifter, right? Right from the get go, I would have never had my foot in the door. Yeah, I would have kicked me out right away. Like with my rep and my brother's rep, you would have known who I was and it would have been over for me. I mean, Billy... You know why we why we hired you. That wasn't because you had things done in the past. We know your backstory. Of course, it's not very likable to like withhold this from us. If you would have been forthright about it, we wouldn't be in this situation at all. And we would be able to have found ways to deal with this. Yeah. I don't think it's it works really well for you right now that you or your brother, depending on who I'm even talking to here, still had something in common that wasn't known to us. Tricks like this, you knew where to look. Because of that, we are even able to have you both here now, I guess, which is a good thing. But I don't know if I'm even, if I should be thanking you or the person in the other room right now. Listen, you know it's me, Joe. Come on. Like, we've Do done I? so- Do give I? Me, give me one reason. Give okay. me one reason here that I should trust you if you're not talking to us. All right. Uh, remember uh, the caper at the docks? You know, uh, we were out there 10 p.m., cold as bricks like we were staking it out for days it felt like but we were finally rewarded at like the fourth or fifth where we finally caught the dude i'm committed to this job i know what i've done and where i've been so what now what do you want me to do here i want you to recognize that i can be trustworthy you know that i can continue working here and i know this looks bad i know all of this looks bad right but i it really does yeah I think in the back of my mind, I was just hoping that everything I do and everything I helped with kind of make up for all this. Let me ask you something else here. Yeah. How's your brother? You, uh, you've seen each other recently? You've been in contact? You're good? You're close? Not as close as we were. I know what you're thinking. What am I thinking? He tried to reach out to me. All right. He said that the inheritance belonged to him specifically, and I shouldn't have gotten a penny of it, but I, I... Listen, if I could just give him the money and he'd disappear from all of this, and I'd do that if I could continue working here. Like, I'm not, that that part of my life's not, I don't want that to get in the way of what I've been doing, you know? I understand. But it is getting in the way now, you know? And not a little. All right, so what what can I do? How can I convince you? Like, you, you, uh, if everyone here in this precinct, you know me better than anyone else. Come on, just give me something that only we'd know. Please. You know what I just don't understand? Yeah. This is what makes it hard for me. If you've been able to shapeshift all this time, we could have solved so many more cases with that asset of you. And you've never outed that. Why, if we are able to trust you, and if you have heart for this company and for the work that we're doing, why did you not use it to your benefit? I understand that you have a history with it or something, sure. But then if this is the only way of getting that out there... That's not working well for you, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to, you know, we could solve this, we can work this out, but I would have to pull a lot of strings here, you know what I mean? I mean, pulling the strings now and pulling the strings then is no different, right? All that's happened is merit. Like, listen, I I feel like I could have convinced you, right? I could have shown this to you day one, week one, and you would have come to understand it. But the people up top, they don't like my people. Hmm... They think I'd be giving them the slip every day of the week and they'd try to throw me out any chance they got. At the end of the day, I'm nothing more than somebody who can change their face to them. 
just another criminal in the making. Yeah, I get that. So, please, like... I mean, I mean, I trust you, you know. We've been in here for a while. It doesn't change the fact that you've worked real hard, like harder than most people I know, to be quite honest. I can't change what they're going to do to your brother. I mean, you should probably be glad that I'm even interviewing here, because if I wouldn't be put on this, you know, you would probably yeah. not be here. I know. Like, I can, I can try to... I guess pull some strings again and do a good word for you, like put the right word in, but I don't know what the, what they're going to do to you or your brother after all this, you know? I think you're the thing that's that's working for you right now is the fact that you're both sitting here, which obviously shows that one of you had the right intention because that is a sacrifice to you as well. But aside from that, you know, it's you're making it pretty hard. I did. And I'm sorry. I think you're the only one who can help me. And I don't want to ask too much of you, so... If it's too much dirt on your shoulder... I'll see what I can do. Listen, I'll... If it's your reputation or mine, then... I'll take my leave. We'll work this out. We always do. <laughs> you're an asshole. Jesus. <laughs> Just one more trick up my sleeve, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Okay, get some sleep. I'll see you in the morning. Right and early. Be careful or not. <laughs> it's always decaf. End scene. There we go. Okay. Pretty clean. Nice. <laughs> My music ended halfway and I was like, ooh, more stakes now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I clicked mine to restart. It was I'm good like, music, by the way. This is a good vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is by, um, what's his name? Um, the guy that everybody turns to for uh, Kevin MacLeod. Kev oh, yeah, Kevin yeah. Kevin MacLeod. The ultimate, like, royalty-free dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout-outs to him. Um, that's that's to you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Um, we're going to wrap this up for the day um, as this jazz music <laughs> slowly fades into the distance. I'm sure I'll fade it when I get to work on it. But, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Um, great episode. <laughs> In two weeks, our clock will sync up again. Next week will be a little bit um, strange. But, I mean... I think we made Is it, it work. next week same time then again? Oh well. we'll yeah, you, your clocks don't I'm go so back bad till at this every year. It's awful. Your clocks don't turn back till the twenty seventh, I believe. So we got one week, one more week when we're at this hour. Okay. But yeah, I trust you. Yeah, we're <laughs> <laughs> more than myself in this one. So sure. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll clarify whenever we get to <laughs> we'll it. But it of work. course, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. Um, to the people watching, it doesn't really matter to you. Um, wherever this, you are, yeah. whenever you are. Um, thank you for tuning in to this podcast of Your Rivers Are Wrong. Hope you are interested in world building and all that sort. Um, just a little bit more after tuning yeah. in. So as you do so, always remember, Your Rivers Are Wrong. Yes, they are. Have a good one. End of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Your Rivers Are Wrong. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future episodes that you'd like to hear us cover, feel free to contact us at yourriversarewrong at gmail.com. Our intro and outro music is written by Maarten Schellekens. Thanks for that. And again, thank you so much for listening. We hope to see you at the next one.